If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. In multiple discussions I've had with you in the past, I, we've talked about how narcissists don't necessarily show themselves to be as pathological up front as it turns out that they're eventually going to illustrate to you that they are. I've known though, because of counseling sessions that I've had and many, many discussions with individuals who have struggled with very difficult people, that sometimes the further you get into that relationship, you realize this isn't just a disappointing relationship, it's become dangerous. This is somebody that is such a, a bad apple. This is somebody that's so difficult and impossible to get along with. I really don't know what they'll do to me or to people that I'm attached to. They can sabotage. They can make my life absolutely miserable. They can uh, uh, hinder your good relations with other individuals. There are three different characteristics that I want you to be aware of that if, if seen in combination with one another, can indicate that that person is indeed a dangerous person. Somebody that you need to stay away from and have as little to no contact with them as possible. Now, the three traits or the three characteristics I wanna discuss with you today are the characteristic of number one, being a complete phony. Number two, having pervasive anger issues. And then number three, operating with a strong calloused nature. Let's go through each one of these three and see what kind of uh, what this does and what it tells us about that individual and who they are and how they engage with you. The first one, being a complete phony. One of the things that we know about narcissists is that they live with what we call the false self or the false front uh, that's in charge of them. Somewhere along the way, they decided, you know what? I am not about to let people see the real me. I don't want you to know what my hurts and what my needs are. I don't want you to know what uh, my flaws or weaknesses are. And so instead, they've learned how to read the, the audience in front of them, and they've learned how to figure out what the rules of engagement might be. And it's like, okay, if you need me to be this way, I can do that for a while. Or if you need to, uh, for me to adapt to this kind of uh, pattern, I can do it for a while. But even so, they're making their adjustments in their chameleon kind of way so that they can score wins. They think of relationships as being competitions. They're deathly afraid of being on the losing end of life or the losing end of engagements and, and uh, decisions with other individuals. And so they don't just look at you as somebody that they can uh, share with authentic authentically. They look at you as somebody that they need to manipulate. They can't be honest about who they are, and therefore, if they can't be honest about who they are, they're going to have low self-disclosure, and they're going to have a low appreciation for who you are. They're constantly looking for ways to put themselves into a favorable position. If they are friendly or if they are helpful, it's a ploy. It's part of their calculated scheme to stay in the top position. They have lots of secrets. What you think you know about them may not be anywhere close to the full story. And they live by the motto, you will not get to know the inside of me. <laughs> they don't even know the inside of themselves, but you will not get to know me. I, I need to know who you are, but you're not going to know me. They're very phony in the way that they engage. But then that second one, the, when, uh, when I say that uh, a second of the three traits that make them very dangerous is they have a pervasive anger issue. It's one thing for some narcissists, well, all narcissists, to have that sense of false self, but these individuals can actually have an, a, an ongoing, underlying, simmering agitation and irritability. It just simply takes very little to set them off. And I've had so many people that have talked with me about how I just said a little small disagreement or I made a mistake or something happened and we just weren't on the same page and boom, it took next to nothing to trigger their anger. 
Many times these dangerous narcissists will come across with very loud and forceful and rageful anger. Sometimes if they're a little bit more guarded than that, they can just have a strong sense of con uh, contempt for other individuals. It's like you just feel like I'm in the presence of someone who hates me. I'm in the presence of someone who just thinks that I am lower than a snake's belly, if you will. And, uh, and, and as a result, the anger, the simmering agitation is just constantly there. And that anger is driven by what I refer to as a strong imperative style of thinking. And when I say imperative, uh, very commanding, very controlling, very overbearing, you must. You have to, you've got to, you're supposed to, and there's little variance as to what they will and will not accept from other individuals, which then makes their anger so easily accessible to them because we, we all uh, deviate or differ from one another, but in their world, it's like, no, you, you better not deviate from me. And then once that anger shows up on the inside of them, assertiveness is not an option. I, through the years, I've taught many, many uh, anger workshops and I've written on the topic of anger. And I explain, you know, it's not wrong or it's not unusual for people to feel angry. It's what you do with it that counts. And in the healthiest sense, we can speak with one another about our needs and our convictions in an assertive way where we talk fairly about what's going on. And we do so in a way where each person gets to walk away with their self-respect still intact. For this narcissistic person, it's like, no, assertiveness is not an, uh, an option. They consciously uh, choose to humiliate people when they're angry. They consciously choose to put people in their place. That's like, I am going to teach you a lesson and it's going to be a lesson that you will not forget. They, they are very overwhelming in their use of anger. So you have the phoniness combined with anger. But then when we get to that third trait, this is the one that, uh, that makes them most dangerous. And that is some of these narcissists can have a strong calloused nature. They've just got a hardened way in which they engage with other individuals. Their attitudes are hardened. Uh, there, there's a, uh, an I couldn't care less uh, notion that they bring toward other individual. Uh, now, it's almost um, uh, stating the obvious, but we're, we're going to just simply say it. They, they have virtually no appreciation or understanding of Love, love can can uh, can uh, can create all sorts of goodwill, but it's like I don't need goodwill. Instead, they go towards the characteristics that uh, make them a bully, and they're very forceful in the way that they engage with other individuals. And part of their calloused nature is that they become you know, just uh, hardened or impervious to the pain that they inflict in other individuals. Have you ever had that happen to you where you're over there pleading your case or explaining how they're, they, they don't need to be this difficult and you just feel like there's this darkened attitude on the inside of that person where it's like, I, I'm even talking to someone that's got some evil going on here. There's something very, very wrong here. And their response is, I don't care. They have no remorse, being tough, is considered a badge of honor to these individuals. They like the idea that they have been able to create an intimidating presence. Now, I know that some of you have had the misfortune of being in uh, interactive with these individuals. It could be that you're married to that person, you live with that person. It could be that you've worked with someone like that. It could be that you're born into a family with individuals who have these kinds of ingredients that I'm mentioning. But these three uh, uh, ingredients in combination with each other, phoniness, uh, anger, and then callousness uh, means that you're up against something that's very difficult. So uh, let's wrap this up by saying, first and foremost, you want to have a really strong understanding of what you're dealing with. You'll want to bring a reasonable and a, 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 a collegial way of trying to talk things through with that person and these people with these three ingredients, they're not reasonable. And so what that means is you want to recognize this is somebody that I'm not going to have a loving and a caring and a, and a collaborative relationship with that. Just know from the moment of your awareness, that's, the, that, that's what you're dealing with. Uh, these individuals lack introspection. They lack uh, uh, self-reflection. 
counseling does next to no good. Whenever I would have some of these folks that would show up in my office, which would be rare, by the way, it'd be like, oh, this is not going to end well. I actually have had a couple of people that I've had to uh, excuse from my office because they were just so harsh and they were so mean. Or uh, if they did come, I would let the other individual know, uh, I'll be willing to work with you, but let's just keep it individual because uh, you, you don't uh, work with them in a didactic kind of way. Instead, the one thing, if anything works at all with these individuals, the one thing that's going to work is consequences. We use the word boundaries and consequences as part of that word. Uh, consequences is if you're going to be harsh and if you're going to be mean, if you're going to be callous, then I'll either need to remove myself. I'll need to bring in legal um, uh, counsel if I have to. I'll let other individuals who, who are in a position of making decisions about the behavioral, the external elements, I'll bring them into the equation. Uh, and then I'm not going to go into any kind of um, pleading or bargaining and all because it doesn't work. Consequences, consequences, consequences. If you have to, keep notes about some of the things that they may have done because I mentioned they can be secret keepers and all of that. So who knows what kind of, of um, things that they may have going on that they don't want other people to know. So you need to make sure that you have things well notated. It's really sad to think that you can be aligned with someone who is this out of touch with healthy living, but they exist and they're out there. And I know that some of you are really hurting because of your experiences with these people. Uh, one final thing that I do want to say, and that is, and I hope this doesn't come across as uh, a pat answer. When you see something that negative, you want to make sure that you take inventory of yourself and make sure I'm going to stand for the better alternatives. Instead of phoniness, you're going to see an authentic, authentic person in me. Instead of that anger, I'm going to live deep into uh, respect, self-respect and respect toward others as much as I'm able. And instead of that callous nature, I want to live with an empathetic nature. I, I, I want to have a care for other individuals. Uh, That's why I emphasize my Dr. C stands for DRC, DRC stands for dignity, respect, and civility. Take your experiences and uh, as you engage with people beyond these difficult individuals, know that the, the experiences that you, had, that you have had have given you that much more of a resolve to be a person that's right there in, in the middle of team healthy. So I know that you've had some difficulty there, but at least if you know what you're dealing with, it can give you a sense of resolve that says, I'm moving on towards something much better. I deserve far more than what these damaged and uh, dangerous individuals can bring to me. I, I, I can't expose myself to that. I do hope that videos such as this give you a good idea of what you're dealing with. And if you've not subscribed, I would encourage you to do so, so we can keep more videos coming in your direction. If you have a need for counseling, and I know that some of you uh, really have a need to uh, unpack this with people. If you have someone in your general area, I would encourage you to seek that out. If you don't, or if you would prefer, we have a sponsor who uh, could take you toward online counseling. They have a whole team of licensed professional experienced counselors. I've had good feedback from people who have used our sponsor. The link is below. In addition, we have courses. And when I say courses, it's more than just, you know, a talk or two. Uh, my, now my two courses, this is uh, 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 free to be. And then my brand new one called This Is Me about setting boundaries with the controllers in your life. And it's very extensive. It has a lot of self-reflection questions with uh, many videos and, and teaching points, etc. So uh, look into that if that's something you would find to be very therapeutic. And of course, we have links to my books, etc. I know that there are some people that are just dangerous and you need to know what you're dealing with, but as you do, then it can give you the resolve that says, I need to go into my self care mode. And in doing so that hopefully you can remove these individuals from a very tight uh, influence in your life and go toward people who really appreciate you. You deserve so much better.